If you don't have money, you cannot afford protein, aka veganism, aka starvation diet. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna check out the channel Goodful. Goodful has 903,000 subscribers, almost 1 million subscribers, hence a huge outreach. They uploaded a video called what three vegans with different budgets eat in a day. Veganism is advertised to us as cheap and sustainable. Let's have a closer look and see what those three people will get for their money. Happy days! Hey, I'm Rachel and today Hello. I'm going to show you what I make for breakfast, lunch and dinner for a total of three dollars. Wow. Hey y'all, my name is Will Edmund and today I'm going to show you how to make three vegan meals for under nine dollars. Let's do this. Hey, nice. I'm May and I'm going to be making breakfast, lunch and dinner for twenty-one dollars or under. For breakfast, I made some baked banana. This is the three dollars now. Banana oatmeal. First, I added some ripe bananas to a mixing bowl and then just mashed them up until they were in a smooth consistency. You already know the drill, nothing but sugar. See? Then for my dry ingredients, I added some rolled oats. More carbs. Salt, baking powder, cinnamon, and a little bit of nutmeg and then mixed it up. I chose to make this recipe because bananas and oats are some of the cheapest ingredients I could think of. And they're both really healthy breakfast foods. Then. <sighs> Those are the cheapest ingredients that you could think of. Did you ever think about why they are so cheap? Did you ever notice that you actually pay for protein? Next time you go to the supermarket, have a closer look. Truly, check it out. You will be amazed. You will see that some cuts of steak are more expensive than some types of fish. When you start comparing their labels, you will see that the steak has a higher protein content than the fish. And this is why it is more expensive. Now you're eating bananas and oats and you want to tell the world, wow, veganism is so sustainable, so cheap. It is cheap because it has zero protein. I added two flax eggs, some maple syrup, coconut oil and vanilla extract. Then I added in some non-dairy milk and mixed it all together until it formed this liquidy consistency. And I didn't have an 8x8 baking dish, so I just made do with these two loaf pans I had. And then I just baked them off. At you will run to the toilet and be hungry again. At 350 for about 35 minutes. Then I decided I wanted to drizzle some sunflower seed butter on top, but buying that in the store is expensive. Mm. And since sunflower seeds are really cheap to buy in bulk. Really cheap and really high in anti-nutrients. You would never get a blender and blend up so many seeds because we live in modern times. We have an abundance of technology that leads to very questionable choices. You're grinding up seeds. Those seeds have anti-nutrients. Why, you might ask? Because those seeds want to protect themselves from being eaten. Do you understand that the seed is the origin of the plant? The plant wants to protect its seeds, its babies, if you will, so new plants can grow. This is why fruits on average have lower amounts of anti-nutrients. The plant doesn't want to protect the fruit, but its seeds. Hence, eating seeds, eating nut butter, seed butters is highly destructive highly toxic. I decided to make my own. So and I just very up cheap. some sunflower seeds until they turned into a powder. And then I added in a little bit of maple syrup for some sweetness, sunflower seed oil to help smooth it out, and yes. a pinch of salt. <laughs> we need more oil. And then I just kept blending that for a long time and eventually it turned into this smooth and creamy consistency. Smooth and creamy consistency. Let me think, what else has smooth and creamy consistency? Hmm. I'm not a huge fan of oatmeal, but I love baking it because it kind of turns into the texture of granola bars <laughs> and it just tastes so much better, especially with the sunflower seed butter drizzled on top. This turned out to be a uh, very- Again, obviously, this is nothing but peasant food. This is nothing but carbohydrates. Guys, if you look into what people have been doing, if they don't have a enough animal foods. They will eat oats, they will eat certain cereals, but what will they mix it with? With small amounts of eggs, 
with small amounts of dairy. Some nutrition at least. This is what it is about. Yes, you get a bulk of calories through the carbohydrates, so you fatten up for winter, but at least you get some nutrition through the animal foods. Now, vegans believe it is a great idea to exclude them all together. Applause. Inexpensive, delicious, and filling breakfast. For breakfast, I made a vegan. Mm, what a smooth voice. And chickpea scramble. All right, first, what you're gonna do, you're gonna add to you a cup of chickpea flour, and then some water, and then some aquafaba, but that's the liquid reserve from the chickpeas. And some what is that? I don't even know what those ingredients are. Traditional yeast, turmeric. Then you add some cumin, chili powder. The reason why Indians add so much turmeric and curcuma to their foods is because it is anti-inflammatory. But why do you need something that is anti-inflammatory? Think about it. Because all the plant foods that they are eating are highly inflammatory. So you end up countering the damage that you produce in the first place. Sea salt, mm -hmm. black pepper, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to stir it around. Look at that. <laughs> Go, stir it. Then you're gonna put your, some coconut oil in your skillet, add some red onions, I love red onions, some garlic, then you're gonna stir it around. But coconut oil is saturated fat. Isn't saturated fat bad? I look at that sizzle, look at that pop. Then you're gonna, Obviously it isn't. You're add some green bell peppers, then you're gonna stir it around. I love using a wooden spoon, some Roman tomatoes, add some Roman tomatoes, then it's gonna do a sizzle. Then you're gonna add your chickpea flour. Look at that formation right there. And you're gonna, yeah, amazing formation right there. So you basically fried the vegetables to the ground. No nutrient is left in them anyways. And now, instead of adding what you really crave, a aka eggs to that dish, you are adding chickpea flour with zero B vitamins, with zero D vitamins, with zero vitamin A, cholesterol, etc. And of course, no bioavailable protein in that dish. Again, you guys, try to replicate animal foods, but you don't take into account that taste blah, 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 is not everything that counts. When we're talking about nutrition, we're talking about nutrients, something that you don't get on a vegan diet. You're gonna wait every two minutes to stir it around because you don't want it to stick to your skillet, but then also, <sighs> You want it to dry out. Then you're going to add some parsley. You can also add any other type of vegetables you want, or you can add some spicy sriracha sauce. <laughs> then that's going to be really good. Yeah, it would be real good if you would eat some simple eggs. Now looking back on veganism, it seems more and more obscure, so strange, so weird. Why would you do that to yourself? You're acting as if we ran out of eggs. Wow, some sort of Mad Max scenario. We have no meat left, no eggs. We have to replace them with chickpea flour. For breakfast, I'm having a green smoothie bowl. I'm using some frozen bananas, organic blueberries, <sighs> about, Sugar. about a fourth of this coconut yogurt that I got for $10. Dairy mimicking coconut yogurt. Hey, I have nothing against coconut yogurt. Tastes quite nice, but offers zero nutrition. Some vanilla almond butter. Same. A handful of kale. Oxalates. And then a tablespoon of mock powder, spirulina. For what exactly? Spirulina tastes so vile. Every inch of your body will rebel against it. The only way that you can eat it is by mixing it with a ton of sugar. It tastes disgusting when vegans tell you, hey, don't eat the poor fish, go straight to the sauce. To the algae, or oh, really, anybody that tasted pure spirulina, pure algae knows it tastes disgusting. Your body rebels. You don't want to eat it. Your body recognizes that it is toxic. Small milk. I've heard so much about these superfood powders, but I've never gotten them because they're definitely not cheap and they- Be happy that you didn't get them. You can hear horror stories in the vegan community of people poisoning themselves with algae. Add up pretty quickly. But honestly, I kind of got to ball out with my ingredients for this video, which was really fun. <laughs> so I topped that with some organic blueberries, hemp seeds, chia seeds, gluten-free organic granola, and some more almond butter. Okay, let's sum this up. You basically have a base of sugar. People think vegetables and fruits are so super healthy. Again, I'm not here to tell you, don't eat fruits and vegetables. Eat them if you want to. However, there is no substantial amount of nutrition in those fruits. You have a little bit of vitamin C and fiber. That's pretty much it. That is the base. It is mixed with spirulina. Disgusting, hence the color. It is topped up with seeds. 
hemp seeds, chia seeds, and a nut butter, which is essentially another seed. It is a anti-nutrient fest. Bowl was honestly so good. It is always so good. Even though some of the ingredients were on the bougier side, making a bowl like this at home is still way cheaper than spending like $15 on a smoothie bowl at a restaurant here in LA. So I would probably say it's worth it. First world problems. I made some zucchini and lentil fritters with a vegan sour cream. So first I grated up. They're just proving my theory. If you don't eat protein, you can cheap out. Wow, mind blowing. Some zucchini and one. What do you think poor people do? They eat a bowl of rice with a little bit of eggs on top. This is what I saw in Indonesia, for example. When they don't have much money, it's a bunch of rice and one maximally two eggs on top to get at least some nutrition to get through the day. If you don't have money, you cannot afford protein, aka veganism, aka starvation diet. Tip to save money. <laughs> transferred the zucchini to a dish towel and I squeezed out all of the excess water because I don't want that extra moisture in the fritters. Then to that. No, you want to dehydrate your food. That's healthy. Same bowl, I added back in the zucchini, some red lentils, diced red onion, some all-purpose flour. <sighs> Again, it's poor people's food. I know vegans will tell you, yes, but lentils have protein. How much really? You look into the lentils, you will see that it's basically equally carbohydrates as it is proteins. On top of it, it is filled with anti-nutrients, aka lectins in this case, yet again. So you cannot eat substantial amounts of it without getting sick. Salt garlic powder, smoked paprika, and cayenne. The reason I chose to make these fritters is because red lentils and all-purpose flour are both some of the cheapest ingredients <laughs> that I can think of, and they really fill you, Ask yourself why. you up for not a lot of money. Fill you up, yes, doesn't equal nourish you. Formed the batter into these cute little patties. So cute. And I fried them in a little bit of sunflower seed oil. Heart attack. For about four to five minutes on each side until they were nice and crispy. For the vegan sour cream, I added some soft tofu. There we go. Finally, the vegan protein. Tofu, lemon juice, a little bit of a neutral oil, and some salt. And then I just blended it up until it was smooth and creamy. I normally would use cashews to make vegan sour cream, but those were too expensive for my budget, so I... By the way, this is a phenomenon that we see in the Western world. I lived in Asia for quite some time. Nobody ever eats outrageous amounts of tofu. It is just a condiment for vegetarians or vegetarian holidays. What we do in the West, we use tofu as a meat replacement. What happens through that? Very, very simple. All the saponins and the phytoestrogens wreck our health. Always the same. If you want to get adequate amounts of protein on a vegan diet, sure, theoretically, on chronometer, you could. This doesn't mean that you will be able to sustain this or that your body won't get sick eating that plant protein in a combination with all of those anti-nutrients, man. Went with tofu instead. And for under a dollar per serving, these fritters were so flavorful and delicious, and I would definitely make them again. That's all that counts, right? Delicious minus nutritious. For lunch, I made a BLT using benevolent bacon. But <laughs> benevolent bacon? But instead of lettuce. <laughs> the names get me every time. It makes it a B-A-T. What you're gonna do, you're gonna get you a cast iron skillet and put a little coconut oh, it looks disgusting. And oil in there and add you about, you know. I don't think this bacon is so benevolent after all. I believe this is nothing but Satan, yet again. Four to six pieces of the, the vegan bacon and you're gonna get it crispy and brown on each side. Just This dude wakes up and tries to replicate eggs. Then he continues with his day and replicates bacon. Dude, do you notice something? Yeah. Look at that, you see how crispy it is? And then I get some wheat bread and I add me some vegan mayo to each side <laughs> of the bread because I like vegan mayo. And then add you love vegan mayo. You love vegan eggs. You love vegan bacon. Some fresh <laughs> tomatoes. See, I actually got these out of my garden. You're gonna put about three pieces oh, of man. bacon on each side and that adds up to about a uh, dollar and 50. So this is a really good, tasty lunch. Yeah, this is cheap because yet again, you're not getting protein, you're getting gluten, you're getting wheat protein, which has a bioavailability 
of zero. This is why it is so cheap, man. And also, just think about it. if you go to a restaurant, this will cost you about $12, and who wants to spend $12? That's a damn good business idea, ripping vegans off. Uh, not <laughs> me, when you can make you a B-A-T at home. How about that? Dude, you're eating burnt gluten. For lunch, I'm making a vegan omelet using just egg. First, I'm sauteing some fresh broccoli. Vegans have an egg obsession. Broccoli and peppers with a couple of field roasts. They're so jealous every time an ex vegan comes out and gets to eat those delicious eggs. Sausages. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that these were cooked. Meat replacements. Do I really have to tell you? It's all the way through when I put them into the <laughs> omelet. Then I coated my pan with some avocado oil and added about a third of the container of just egg. I've never used just egg before, so there was a bit of a learning curve here, but we made it work. You know it's your species-specific diet if you have to get adjusted to and learn how to cook an egg. And sausage and topping that with Miyoko's vegan cheddar. <laughs> I used to love... Okay, so we have meat replacement, we have egg replacement, and we have cheese replacement. But we still gonna insist that we are herbivores. Of eggs <laughs> before I became vegan, and it's honestly been pretty hard to find a good substitute. I've heard great things Amazing. about just egg, but it always seemed a little pricey for me, so getting to try it for this video was super exciting. Because don't get me wrong, I love a good tofu scramble, but it's like not that you sure do. The same. But oh my god, just egg blew me away. I would have sworn I was eating real eggs if I hadn't have made this myself. <laughs> but wait a second, aren't eggs disgusting? They are hence periods after all. They're coming out of the vagina of those poor tortured chickens. This is yucky. This is disgusting. We don't like eggs. So how come that you all of a sudden enjoy it so much and it just tastes like eggs? Vegans! Please, be logically consistent. If you find it morally reprehensive to eat eggs because you believe that this is bad, why would you replicate that evil act? Think about it logically. If you find the act of raping children morally reprehensive, would you try to replicate it? Would you go out, try to find 18-year-olds that look younger? Would you try to make them look like children? Would you find that morally acceptable? Would you then say, oh wow, I had sex with an 18-year-old, but it felt as if she was 12. You are hypocrites. It's disgusting. I paired this with some avocado toast and had by far the best lunch I've had in a while. Oh, For best lunch that I had in a while. Because it tasted like the real deal. Dinner, I made some hearty vegan chili. I decided to use dried beans. And vegan chili, aka lectin bowl. This chili because they were the cheapest option. Where I live, I can usually find a can of beans for about a dollar. <laughs> There you go. Yet again, you're fighting the inflammation with the curcumin. This is what you try to do. It's not rocket science. We all know that if you're eating too many beans, you get digestive issues. But somehow, vegan doctors brainwashed you into believing that eating beans is healthy. What exactly is healthy about it? It's a bunch of lactins. It destroys your gut if you eat an outrageous amount which vegans do. Some heat. Then I sauteed this again to activate the spices in the oil. Then I added in my beans from earlier and some fire roasted diced tomatoes. Then I added some frozen yellow corn because I love corn and it's cheap. It's pig food. And some vegetable broth using some veggie bouillon. If you want to make this even cheaper, you can make your own vegetable broth by saving up your vegetable peelings. Uh, again, peasant food, nothing more, nothing less. You look at this, usually you would find chicken pieces, a little bit of beef in here for people that don't have enough money to sustain themselves. Still, they would infuse this bowl with animal nutrition so they could extract some nutrition. This is it. Have you ever heard about plant nutrition? No, you always hear about phytonutrients. What are phytonutrients? Nobody ever questions anything, man. It's mind-blowing. Phytonutrients are nothing but plant chemicals. Naming them something doesn't make it so. And then boiling and straining them. Then I brought this all to a boil, reduced it to a simmer, and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Now, normally I would add some baked and seasoned tofu crumbles to this chili. <laughs> of course you would. But I was trying to keep it to about a dollar per serving, so I decided to go with some TVP instead. 
TVP is just soy flour that's had the fat removed. And when you read Rex Havoc on your digestion, anybody that ever tried it knows exactly what I'm talking about. This is processed soy. Even if you look into the studies, you will find that isolated soy proteins are the worst for the human body. Even vegans will agree. Hydrate it in a liquid. It has a But now they're advertising to their almost 1 million followers that this is how you could eat on a budget. Instead of just buying a couple of eggs, instead of buying a little bit of minced meat and getting by 10,000 times healthier than with this gunk. Great meaty texture. So I they hate humans. This is why they do it. To let the crumbles fully rehydrate. And then I served it with some of that tofu sour cream from earlier. And it's a great example that vegan cooking does not have to cost you a lot of money. Yeah, and it's a great example that you ate nothing but beans. The soy beans, obviously beans, kidney beans, black beans, whatever. It is all legumes. It is all high in lectins. It will all wreck your gut. For dinner, Thank you. I made my famous. Ah, oh, there he is again. Nashville hot, not chicken. <laughs> Get out of here, man. First you're gonna start off with Now he wants chicken. Almond milk and you're gonna add some lemon juice. That's how we're gonna make our vegan butter mix. Then you're gonna whisk it around. Vegan butter, yeah, yeah sure. Then you win, I can't, I can't anymore. You're gonna add some pickle brine for flavor. <laughs> then a little bit of Louisiana hot sauce. And then aquafaba. Mm-hmm. What is aquafaba? Mm-hmm. Then you're gonna stir it around real good. This is gonna be a marinade. Then you're gonna put some mushrooms in another fresh clean bowl. You're gonna situate them around here, and then you're gonna pour that marinade in over it, and then you're gonna sit it away in the refrigerator for about two Oh minutes. no, you're gonna make chicken out of mushrooms. Four hours, and then next you're gonna get another bowl and gonna mix some flour, and then you're gonna add some pink sea salt, and then you're gonna add a little garlic powder, and then a little pepper, and then you're gonna mix it around. <laughs> then you're gonna coat your mushrooms and your flour, and then you're gonna coat your mushrooms. It is truly the end times. Humanity ran out of chickens. We don't have enough. We need to marinate mushrooms. <laughs> and your marinade, you're gonna do that two times. And then if you have a wire rack, you're gonna let these sit out oh, cool and dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then this is so pathetic. And next in your cast iron <laughs> skillet, you're gonna mix a little butter and coconut oil. And then you're gonna mix some cayenne peppers and garlic powder, pink sea salt and some black pepper and some brown sugar and everything and then you're gonna cook it on medium heat until the butter and the coconut oil <laughs> melt the butter and then you're gonna add your mushrooms to your skillet and you're gonna fry them up real good until they're crispy real good real good man you can take a piece of paper and deep fry it it will taste real good this is nothing new but yet again ask yourself why is it so cheap it is so cheap because mushrooms don't have protein it is very very simple you're not extracting any nutrition out of this and then you're gonna allow them to cool on a nice plate and then you're gonna brush them with the sauce that's gonna give it that nice nashville hot spicy taste anybody in nashville is laughing about you. It drizzled me some agave on it. And look how good that looks. I mean, I've made this for so many people and people love But wait a sec, this looks good. Why does it look good? It looks good because it reminds you of meat. Why does meat look good to the human? Hmm. Humans like the look of meat. Cows like the look of grass. Men like the look of women. Women like the look of men. Do I have to give you more examples? When will you understand that your choices are determined by your biology? You love meat. I love it because of the crispy, the texture, because it reminds Wake up. them of eating something really tasty, but also healthy and flavorful. Healthy and flavorful. You took a mushroom, you soaked it in 10,000 ingredients, and then you deep fried it in vegetable oils. Now you add pickles. This is healthy. Mm. You gotta add your little you know, sweet butter pickles on the top, and then remember <laughs> to add your little Louisiana hot sauce for some more flavor, some added heat, and you'll be good. Yeah, you be good. You be nutritionally deficient. Hope y'all enjoy. Dude. For dinner, I'm making a chili mac using Beyond Beef. 
First, I'm making a spice mixture of cornstarch, chili powder, Cheers. oregano, paprika, and salt and pepper. Then, I'm salting some water, bringing that to a boil, and adding in two cups of bonza chickpea pasta. I went with this brand because it's a great source of protein that you don't normally get with regular pasta. It's fantastic. You know you made it in life when you're relying on your pasta for protein. Less time than the package says, because it's gonna finish cooking later on. About a minute before the pasta is ready, I'm adding in some broccoli to blanch that before putting the rest of the dish together. Pour those into a strainer and rinse. It's so hilarious to see to me. Really, those people are brainwashed. They believe just because they're adding broccoli to their meal, they're eating healthy. Look at what our society has become. Ask your grandparents, ask your parents, have they been eating broccoli? Nobody on the Balkans, where I'm from, ever heard about broccoli. All of those people lived long, healthy lives before the industrialization. Now they're eating a bunch of breads, a bunch of potato chips, a lot of alcohol, cigarettes, all of that gunk. Obviously, now the life expectancy is declining. However, everybody knew back in the day that you will be healthy if you're eating meat, if you're drinking milk, if you're eating eggs. Nobody would be so stupid to rely on vegetables. It's with cold water to Unreal. stop overcooking. Next, I'm adding some oil into a big pot, adding half of a white onion and three cloves of minced garlic. Once those have had a chance to soften, I'm adding in one pound of Beyond Ground Beef. I've had Beyond Burgers at restaurants before and I love them, but- Oh really, you did? How come? I've never gotten it for myself ha. because it's honestly pretty expensive. Mm. Cooking this stuff was crazy though. It cooks just like the real thing. It was kind of- Herbivores that crave something that tastes like meat. Very, very interesting. Scary how legit it looked. Once it looked well cooked, I added in the cornstarch and spice mixture and about a cup and a half of Miyoko's cheddar. I've tried a lot of vegan cheeses, but, <laughs> of course. but I found that Miyoko's in particular melts super well compared to other brands, and it was perfect for this recipe. It's absolutely perfect. What you added there is vegetable oils, no calcium, like real dairy, no protein, like real dairy, no vitamins, like real dairy. But this is what you got the broccoli for, of course. Look at this dish, all you're trying to do, I can't repeat it yet again, is replicating animal foods. Please, people, you are possessed by the devil. Of things like this before I was vegan, and especially <laughs> being a relatively new vegan, having these mean cheese alternatives that are so close to the real thing makes the transition a lot easier. This dish turned out so well. I shared it with my... You can hear it in her voice. She's obsessing about real meat, real dairy. Why is that so? Is it because she is evil? Is it because her parents are evil and they brainwashed her into liking animal foods? What is it? Make up your mind. Why does it taste good? Ask yourself. Roommates who aren't even vegan and they said they would have never guessed that it wasn't real meat and cheese if I didn't tell them. So I would say this was a success. Mm, so then it is a success. I tricked my fellow humans. Obviously, nowadays society is so screwed. They cannot tell the difference because they're eating processed gunk all the time. No matter what you deep fry, no matter what you cover in sauce, of course it will taste similar. Wow. Even though some of these ingredients were pretty expensive, buying and cooking with these products is still way cheaper than going out to eat. So maybe splurging every now and then isn't such a bad thing. Yeah, not bad at all. Meanwhile, you can get one kilogram, which is almost two pounds of minced meat for five bucks. All right, and this is it. Yet again, another long enough video. Thank you very much for making it through. Those vegans never fail to amaze me. It is crazy how entrapped they are in their ideology, in their religion. They cannot see the truth. They cannot see the light. Those poor people are trapped. Please help them to wake up. Please help them to reclaim their health. Free them from their delusion. They are living in some sort of apocalyptic time where they don't have enough nutrition in the first world. The third world is meanwhile starving. They truly do not have enough food and the rich privileged society is malnourishing themselves. Yet again, welcome to 2020. All right, but this is it. Guys, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box. Thank you very much for your support. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.